Okay. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of My Blockchain Island uh, Beyond on the Road. Um, I'm here today at Hoshikon in Vegas, yay me, and yay you, because we get to meet wonderful people like Steve Sprague from Rivets, yes. and you're the CEO there. I am. Great. So tell us a little bit about Sprague, uh, sorry, tell us a little bit about Rivets. Um, so Rivets is a company we started in 2013. I come from a 20-year background in the trusted computing space. So how do we um, hide and protect secrets within devices? And We've spent many years building hardware into phones, PCs, and other devices that are there to protect those secrets. Mm -hmm. We're now providing the software to take advantage of those embedded security that's already in mm -hmm. your phone mm -hmm. to protect your blockchain transactions, to protect your keys, so that we, it's the way we want it to work. We want Bitcoin just built into our phone. Exactly. We want it simple and easy to use. Um, but have world-class protections as though I carry around around a separate hardware wallet or cool. a treasure or something like that. Yeah, you were just uh, in, a, in an amazing session just here at, at the Hoshikon, and um, you mentioned like this. The session was like built like the built-in application here, making it accessible and usable to everybody. And you used some great examples about the phone, right? Right. Um, but you also mentioned like a, you gave a great analogy of like how a graphics card used to work on a PC and how that evolved. Can you just like reiterate that small analogy sure. again? Sure. Um, it's, it's almost like anything. Like in the case of multimedia, in the beginning we had to like add a graphics card and add a sound card and go see if we could make it all work and then get the video game to actually produce sound. And, and, and so a few people did it. Eventually then, you know, Microsoft standardized on a multimedia PC in Windows 98 and everybody got it. And like you wake up the next morning and now we're doing YouTube videos and the video actually works. Hi and YouTube. It's plug and play <laughs> and, and and it's taken it took a decade to really make it work seamlessly so we could all operate it. But once it became built in, it became available to all of us. Mm -hmm. And it starts to drive some standards and then some interoperability. So you have an expectation like if you download an MP3 track, it plays. Yeah. It's not like some of them play, some of them don't play, maybe it doesn't work, maybe I gotta mess with it for an hour. No, you just want it to work. And so we think that's the next step. How does blockchain get built into mobile? And we've partnered with Telefonica, yep. one of the largest carriers in the world, to help build those capabilities in place. And, and the goal there is not to give the carrier control of your keys, because mm -hmm. I don't think that's what we want in blockchain, but we want them to help us to manage and operate our keys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so what we've done is half of your keys are protected by the manufactured device okay. in what's the trusted execution environment in the chips of your device, mm -hmm. and the other half of your keys are protected by the SIM chip that you got from the carrier. Wonderful. And so that way, like if you lose your phone and you call your carrier up and you're like, oh my God, I lost my phone, turn mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it turns off everything else in yeah. your phone too because yeah. half your keys were in your SIM. They turned off the SIM. Then it turns out you left your phone in the Uber. The Uber dropped it back off at your house. You call the carrier back up and say, can you turn my phone back on? How do you do that works. without a phone? <laughs> well, you use mom's phone. <laughs> That's that's very um, so. I think like you've mentioned some really important points here, like how uh, that I want to tap into, like how important is the mobile device now to to the to the blockchain ecosystem and how the adoption is going to move. Like, is mobile the the place where it's all going to happen? Well, the other choice is that we're all going to get some other device we're going to carry around and have to charge every night. I yes, of course it's mobile. Is it like, not a chip that you put into your skin? No. 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 Look. Mobile is the current thing. It's yep. not to say in the future we're not going to have some other, you know, like hovercraft that follows us around with our <laughs> computer or something, right? I mean, when we were all carrying around PCs that weighed 10 pounds, who could imagine sure. I could have a 10 mobile. times the power <laughs> in a little, little thing, thing that's this big, right? Yeah, exactly. But, but fundamentally, yeah, your mobile is the right device to have this all in. And, mm. and the thing that I find is really important in mobile is like, if you just hand me your phone, it feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You notice that somebody, else, oh my God, somebody else is it's touching very, my phone. It's very personal. Well, yeah, because we've been trained for millions of years by our mothers to keep track of our important things. Yeah. Right, and so that's actually a really important piece of the puzzle. We don't have to take you to cybersecurity training. We just have to have you notice that you lost your phone. Mm -hmm. and, and then we have to teach you some simple actions when you lose your phone as to how do I make a new phone Mm. How do I protect the keys that were on the old phone? How do I turn it off? How do I turn it on? Mm -hmm. Those are manageable process steps. So imagine if 
like your family's collection of devices yeah. held all your keys. Yeah. So you yeah. lose your phone. Yeah. And now you gotta call mom and say like, hey mom, I lost my phone. Mm -hmm. First off, then you'll get yelled at for being lo for losing your phone because you know you really shouldn't lose these valuable things. And right, and <laughs> how you have to talk to mom anyway. And how responsible you are. Hi mom. Yeah. But, <laughs> but then mom will ultimately push the button that says yes, I consent the fact that mm -hmm. that you lost your phone, mm -hmm. let's make a new phone. Mm. And you talk about the interconnected devices within the home as well, being part of that collaborative network in, in what you were saying earlier today as well. Sure, because yeah. isn't that what we want? We want to move away from this old land model where mm -hmm. like somehow I hook my printer to my Linksys switch and there's like three people on the planet know how to make this stuff work. Yeah. Really what we want is our collection of devices to be friends with each mm -hmm. other and that we can manage the relationship between those devices as friends. Yeah. So of course I want my printer to be a friend of my laptops. Then I could just like send it a chat job and it could just like print. That's it, make that it work. fantastic from anywhere, on any network, any time. Yeah. And so blockchain becomes a way for the consumer to manage the keys to their collection of devices. Let their devices be part of a social network of things. Things, yep. And I think that that's something we can understand. I, we can, we can actually comprehend like making our doorknob a friend of our phones, a friend of the cars. Yep. So you can unlock the door from the car. Go think, <laughs> who would have thought it? Right, <laughs> and, and, and so maybe we can get away from the old world where you gotta like stand on the little step ladder in the garage pushing the button on the thing while somebody else pushes the button in the car while some third person reads the manual because none of us know how to pair our car with our garage door opener, mm -hmm. we can make this better. <laughs> I think right? so. And I think those are some of the ways to, to make these devices nice. work. You also mentioned a point of the, the power of the send button. And, and I think what you're just saying is also tapping into that, the power behind, behind the action of the user, right? And the user enabling all the actions thereof of, of devices. That's right. Yeah. I, I think that we, the internet, is built on this idea of an unknown computer that you should be able to walk up to any computer anywhere in the world mm. and do your home banking. Yeah. That's really kind of a falsehood. Mm. Like actually we as consumers would like to say to the bank, only allow home banking from this, this device. device. Yep. Because then if I lose my password, I don't have to worry about the Russians logging in or the guy next door mm. or whomever, mm -hmm. right? Because it's bound to this device and I can look and see, oh look, my laptop mm -hmm. is still in my house. Mm -hmm. So somebody hasn't stole my bank mm -hmm. from it yet. And and yet today we function on this idea, let me give you a password, then let me give you a second, f another password, <laughs> and then like turn your card over and there's a third password and like type all those things in. Yes. We, that's not what we want. Um, and so there are some great examples, like your cable box at home. Like I'm old, so we get to, so we get to watch movies at home. Like we turn the TV on, you push the button, and the TV turns on, and the television comes on the screen. The kids nowadays they like have to log into Netflix and stuff. <laughs> That's true. The log best in, in my in. house. The best in my house is the children shared Netflix with their grandmother. Yeah. Then the grandmother forgot the password, so she pushed password reset. She knew my wife's email. Yeah. which was the recovery. So she recovered the email on my oh, wife's yeah. thing. And so she changed the Netflix account. Oh, geez. And so the kids were all in a panic. They're all calling around going, we've been hacked. <laughs> we've lost control of our Netflix. This is terrible. <laughs> Graham hacked the Netflix account. <laughs> it was fantastic. Like, why is it being Why is it so why, complicated? Why does it have to be so complicated? Why yeah. can't I just say this Netflix account is shared by these 10 devices or five devices? Sure. And it just works. You just turn it on and it comes on the screen. I don't need to I know all these stupid mm. codes. Connecting this into then the whole decentralized econ like decentralized economy or decentralized technology, right. let's call it this. How how important again is this to what you're you what you're talking about here? Well, so the mechanism of trusting our device is critical to decentralized economy because what we've done so far is we've we've hidden the security problems by watching everything. Sure. So by having a central server and watching like, oh my God, you're logging into your bank from a new IP address or a new oh machine. Oh my God, oh my God. And, 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 <laughs> and so are you really sure you want to do this? Can you please give me like four another birth certificates to tell me you're really you? <laughs> and so we, there's this sort of voyeurism approach of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And with a decentralized system, we lose the possibility of a voyeurism approach. There's, mm -hmm. We don't know which node we're talking to. We don't know where the, in, the transaction was sent to. Mm -hmm. We own the keys, we send it to the cloud. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. really the cloud. Yeah. And so therefore, it's very important that the device that we use starts to play a more active role in helping us to protect our experience mm -hmm. on the web. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, we actually might claw back some greater privacy because now I can start to send you encrypted messages because my device can handle the keys mm -hmm. and it can change the keys with all the other devices in my house mm -hmm. and I can store pictures that are encrypted on social media context and only share access and so it will change the model from a much more sort of voyeurism always watching model mm -hmm. to a model that's much more in control of the user mm -hmm. but it's really not the user who wants to do that the user wants to operate a robot who controls all their they secrets. want to execute yeah. they, they, they want their device that both creates and consumes media mm -hmm. to be part of the puzzle that creates it. Like, we're shooting this video on a camera, but how do you really know it's on that camera? Sure. Like, we don't know that the sensor is really there. We don't know it hasn't been edited or altered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't know it's original. Mm -hmm. And those it things is. become really <laughs> interesting to play with as to how do I get to much better provenance, much better quality over mm -hmm. time. Nice, nice. Um, so I'm just like um, summing up a little bit here. Um, so what's the what's the ambition with Rivets now? Like what are your next steps for your company? Uh, our, our mission is really simple. We're building the security and controls and relationships both in blockchain and in other services so that the next time that somebody hands you a key, you don't have to know what you're doing. It's just magically and securely stored for you. Wonderful. So we think of it as really two missions. One is to provide the user a simpler and safer experience, because mm -hmm. you really don't care about security, you just mm -hmm. want it to work. Mm -hmm. And the other is to increase the value of the services that are delivered by the individual service providers, yes. because as we improve the quality of security, not only does it improve user interface, but it also allows us to deliver a more valuable a service. service yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank oh, you thank for you. educating me and my listeners. It's been a pleasure to, to listen to you earlier today, and I know you've got another keynote coming up later on, so I'm looking forward to tuning into that too. Excellent. Well, Thanks thank you so for your time. much. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and uh, see you very soon. Bye.